Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Ala nabiyyina Muhammad <coughs> Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da Habati fillah I thought that it would be useful for us to go through a text uh, of one of the contemporary scholars, Abdullah ibn Abdul Hamid al Athari, half of Allah Ta'ala, which was introduced by Sheikh uh, Jibreen, Rahmatullah Ali, Sheikh Saleh uh, Ali Sheikh, half of Allah Ta'ala, and other than them from the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. And it's a book which has immense value for us because it's a reminder and it's a concise presentation of the usul or aqidah and creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And this is something we all need to be aware of and we all need to remind ourselves of and be and put ourselves in a position to remind others. And the only way that we can put ourselves in the position to remind others is by ilm, is by knowledge, is by seeking knowledge, doing talab al-ilm. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all success. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man yirid Allahu bihi khayran yifaqo fiddin. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him knowledge of the religion. And the ulama say the mafhum al-mukhalifa or the, the opposite understanding or what we can infer from this text of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that when Allah does not give a person understanding of the religion, it's a sign of his lack of love for that individual. So we want to be of those <coughs> who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates through ilm, through knowledge. And may Allah grant us success in that. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. The Prophet sallallahu said, Man salaka tariqan yal talmasuhu bihi ilmin sahalallahu lahu tariqan ila jannah. Whoever traverses the path of knowledge Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. So what's the path to paradise? Or what was one of those things to make easier for us? Paradise is the path of knowledge, is ilm. And the knowledge that we're referring to is not the knowledge of being a computer scientist or being a uh, engineer or a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher of some sort or a professor. All of those have merits and they're all beneficial things, but they're not beneficial in the shara, or they are not what the ulama are referring to when they refer to al nafia al nafia in general, according to the ulama, most of the ulama, is that it refers to knowledge of Islam, knowledge of the textual pr proofs, knowledge of kitab Allah, wa sunnat al-rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. And so going to the book that we will try our best to, to, to get through. It's called A Concise Presentation of the Creed of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. And so we'll read, just uh, begin by going through some of the introductions or, or, or just a portion of some of the introductions of some of the ulama like Sheikh Salih Ali Sheikh, half of the Lahu Ta'ala. Some of the things he said in regards to, uh, in the uh, introduction in this text, he said, the reader of history, of Islamic history, will see that its honor, prevalence, dominance, and submission of other nations uh, to it was due to the purity of its creed, sincere attention towards Allah, complete obedience to the Holy Prophet wasallam, and its adoption of the methodology of the pious predecessors, meaning the Salaf of this Ummah as well as uniting behind its leaders, not disagreeing with them. On the contrary, the disgrace of the Muslim Ummah, its downfall, weakness, and prevalence of other nations over them were due to the prevalence of innovations in the matters of religion. The association of partners with the law, allowing shirk to come into the Ummah, emergence of misguided groups, and disagreeing and revolting against their religious leaders and rulers. There is no doubt in that this deviation from Islamic monotheism from the practices of our pious predecessors has been 
uh, and being deceived by the words of the leaders of deviant groups have been responsible for the division of the Ummah and the weakening of the strength. History bears witness to that. The only way out of this disgrace is a return to what the Prophet ﷺ was upon and his companions and the leaders of guidance. For as Imam Malik ibn Anas, Anas uh, anhu said, the last of this nation will never be reformed except through that which reformed the first uh, generation. And of course, what is that? That's Tawheed. And what is that? It's understanding Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's adhering to the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Then the Shaykh, he mentioned uh, the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al-Kareem, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رَسُولِنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمِيزَانِ لِيَوْمَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ لِيَكُمُ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al-Kareem, Indeed, we have sent our messengers with clear proofs and revealed with them the scripture and the balance or justice that mankind may keep up justice. So we're ordered as an ummah to be just and we're ordered to follow the example of the messengers at Ahim after Salatu Salam. And all of them were sent with what? What message were they all sent with? They were all sent with Tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولِينَ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُ تَعْبُودِ And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah, calling to worship Allah, and avoid those things, worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Ahlul Islam, they adhere to Tawheed. And regardless if the weak and ignorant ones from amongst them begin to follow the other nations and begin to think that we have one universal world ideology or world religion. This is not the case and that has no nothing to do with Islam and Islam is free from it because Islam is the call to Tawheed. It's, it is it's Islam lillahi bi Tawheed wal inqiyad lahu. It is uh, submission to Allah. It's Islam lillahi bi Tawheed peace through the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through his monotheism be tawheed and adhering to that and leaving off shirk so Ahl Islam avoid shirk and they follow the sunnah of the messengers all of them regardless of the sharia that they came with regardless of the laws that they came with to their particular people that all of them were united in the creed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of who Allah wa ta'ala is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the shaykh, he, said, he mentioned, indeed the peak of justice is monotheism, while the greatest of injustice is polytheism. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, while mentioning the incident of Luqman advising his son, uh, O oh my son, join not in worship others with Allah. Verily, joining others in Allah uh, in worship with Allah is a great vun. Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah says, Verily, I, the jinn and mankind are in a great matter. That I created them, but others are worshipped uh, besides me. Similarly, I grant them provisions, but others are thanked instead. So look at this Sahaba Tafillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us. He's a razak. He's the only one worth, worthy of worship. And the purpose of worship is to worship, the purpose of our existence is to worship Him and Him alone. This is why we were created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُ And I did not create mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So if that is our divine purpose, and if the way to show thanks is by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why is it that we don't do this? Why is it that we fall short as believers? Because here I'm addressing the, the mu'mineen. I'm not addressing those other communities, but I'm, I'm addressing those people who do believe in Allah. That we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to thank Him by worshiping Him and Him alone. Worshiping Him in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And 
calling others to that, inviting others to that, and showing others the proper and appropriate example, the example of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to invite the people to Khayyam, to invite them from darkness to light, min dhulumat al nur. And this is what the messengers, alayhim afdhu salatu wasalam, they all did. They all called to Tawheed. They all invited people from darkness to light. And in this regard, with regards to contemporary events, with what we see, for example, with the group, the Takfiri groups like ISIS and Boko Haram, and alhamdulillah, uh, ISIS is being beaten back and defeated at the hands of their enemies, and at the hands of some of our enemies, the Shia, the Rafidah. And they are being destroyed at those people by, by the combination of nations fighting against them. And we feel no remorse, we rejoice in their defeat. Why? Because they were so extreme. They were so beyond the bounds. And they spread so much wickedness and evil for the Ummah of Muhammad even if they say La ilaha illallah. And that's an important concept, Ahabat Allah, because many of the people of Shubahat, they say, hey, how can you rejoice when these people are fighting? Uh, they've done such, they fought non Muslims and they've done this and they've done that. And we look into what these people do and what these people call to and how they make takfir of the, the, the leaders in the ulama and slander the ulama and slander Ahl Sunnah and the evil and wicked they have done to humankind. No one accepts that. No Muslim accepts that. Muslims strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do not go beyond the bounds of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. So, therefore, the call to Tawheed, the call to rectification, the call to the, to the kitab was sunnah, to call to rectifying ourselves and to rectify the greater human uh, community is based on the Quran and the sunnah, not through bloodshed and hatred and destruction. And there is no benefit in that call and the wickedness that we witness from those people who strap bombs upon themselves and call the youth from around the world to blow themselves up. What kind of dawah is that? Who in their right mind respects that? Only people of deviant hearts can respect this uh, people killing themselves in order to kill their enemies as well. Intentionally. وَعِيَاذًا billah And spreading their wickedness and facade around peaceful places around the earth. وَعِيَاذًا billah. And then the Shaykh he mentioned another ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, which is in direct, uh, has relevance to what we were just speaking about. He says, and do not do mischief on the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not do mischief on the earth after it has been set in order. And invoke him with fear, hope. Surely Allah's mercy is ever near unto the good doers. So the people who are doing good, the people who are doing righteousness, the people who are spreading khair, that they have glad tidings from Allah, their Lord. They're the ones who should fear nothing because they will have the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala tufsidu fil ard, bado islahiha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it says, and do not do mischief on the earth after it has been set in order. Those people who do this mischief and uh, spread wickedness, then those people, those are the people who have the characteristics of the munafiqeen, of the hypocrites. Those are the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the hellfire because they, they spread wickedness in that which was, was uh, balanced and that which was correct and that which had good and that which had order. Instead, they attack progress, they attack khair, and they spread sham. Even if they claim that it's khair, even if they cloak it in the kitab wa sunnah, and this is imperative for us to understand, because when you hear those wicked people, as well as the other groups and sects, claiming to be doing something in the name of Allah, or to be doing an act of ibadah, 
which is not legislated by Islam in the name of Allah, they will give you a, maybe a verse from the Quran. Maybe perhaps they'll give you something from the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but don't you but you must know that all of the groups of wickedness, all of the groups of deviance, deviancy, that they all use and try to substantiate uh, the, the the their actions and their various times of uh, worship and their various types of da'wah and their methodologies and their minhaj through the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Otherwise no one would even have begun to listen to them. Nor would they have been recorded in history as groups and sects related to Islam if they had no basis in the Quran and the Sunnah. Meaning they did not at least try to substantiate their actions through the Quran and the Sunnah. We see these wicked contemporary groups spreading their wickedness through the earth, trying to justify what they, they do through the Quran and the Sunnah. And by the kalam of the ulama. So they take speech of the ulama as a hujjah, as a, some sort of evidence to substantiate suicide bombings. Wa'iyadhan billah. And they take these kind of texts to wage their own theory according to their intellect, their intellect which is naqs, which has many shortcomings and many contradictions, and they use it to substantiate the terror that they spread around the earth. This is not from the Aqidat al-Islamiyyah. This is not from the Af'al al-Islamiyyah. This is not from the Minhaj al-Sunnah al-Nabawiyyah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not from it. But instead, they try to substantiate with their shubahat. Likewise, those extreme Sufis, and, and any other groups, and I'm just giving just a couple of examples, they will substantiate their leaving off worship by using an ayat. Or as a verse in, a, in the Quran goes, and I made a mistake on the verse, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what it means is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and worship Allah until yaqeen comes to you. So the extreme amongst some Sufi sects, they interpret this verse to mean yaqeen, meaning that it's a certain level of sincerity and a certain level of ikhlas and a certain level of sincerity to Allah, so you no longer have to worship Him anymore. Meaning that you're from the awliya, you're from the saints, and that you have reached such a... To them, their sheikhs, certain sheikhs amongst them, have reached such a level of taqwa and such a level of piety that they no longer have to worship Allah. And some of them are so wicked and deviant to such another extreme that they believe they've become one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do not believe what I'm saying, then go back to some of those texts of some of the extreme people of Ahla Tasawwuf. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ حَوَلَاءِ زَنَادَكَ so, Ahabatif al it's very important to know that many of the groups that they use the verses of the Quran to substantiate their deviance and they make ta'wil facet. They make a, a, a false interpretation of the text and false usage and a false minhaj which is built upon. They try to build it upon the Quran and the Sunnah but it's in fact built upon their false interpretation. Allah mentions in Surah in, in Ali Imran, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim." Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif Lam Mim. Allah la ilaha illahu al-Hayy al-Qayyum. Nazla alik al-Kitab bil-Haqi. Musaddak al-Nabi bina yadi. Wanzal al-Torah wal-Injil. Min qabla hudin lil-Nas wanzal al-Furqan. Inna al-Ladin kafiru bi-ayat Allah ilhum adab shadid. Wallahu aziz al Inqam. Inna Allah la yakhfa alayhi shayin fi al-Ard wa la fi al-Sama. هو الذي يصوركم في الأرحام كيف يشاء لا إله إلا هو هو العزيز الحكيم. and Allah سبحانه وتعالى says uh, later in the verse he سبحانه وتعالى says about the he mentions the محكمات ومن uh, ومن uh, Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions the the verses which are the محكمات and the mutashabihat. فَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فِي يَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَا مِنْ As for those whose heart is misguidance, 
that inclinations towards their desires, that inclination towards wickedness and ta'wil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says <clears throat> that those whose heart is Zayd, is this deviance, that they are seeking this, this false interpretation, that they are seeking to interpret and they follow the mutashabihat. They follow the verses that are ambiguous, that have more that can have more than one interpretation, that are not clear uh, defining verses that, that seem that have a that have more uh, ambiguity to them. So they follow those verses and those texts to substantiate their creed and their deviance. This is the danger that we have to be careful of, and this is why it's important for us to study the Aqeed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. The Shaykh mentioned many other uh, benefits, and I'll end before we even get to the text. He mentioned the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, which was illustrating that we would divide, and illustrating that the prescription for this division and for those groups, for that for that deviance that's out there, in order to deal with that and to repel that deviance, and in order to safeguard yourself from that deviance, the prophetic advice is in order. The Prophet ﷺ said, Usikum bi taqullah, wa sam'i wa ta, wa in kana abdin habashiyan, fa innu man ya'ish minkum ba'di fa sayyara ikhtilafin kathira. فعليكم بسنتي وسنتي خل وسنت الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين تمسكوا بها وعذوا عليها بالنواجد وإياكم محتثر الأمور فإن كل بدع فإن كل محدثة بدع وكل بدع ضلالة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, I advise you to fear Allah and to listen and obey your leader, even if he is an Ethiopian slave. For whoever lives after me will witness great disagreements. Therefore, hold on to my sunnah in the way of the rightly guided khalifat. Stick to it firmly, meaning adhere to it. Adu alayha bi nawajid. You know, adhere to it with your molar teeth. Beware of newly invented matters in the religion, because every newly invented matter is a bid'ah, and every bid'ah is misguided. So bid'ah and following the way, other than the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, following those various paths will lead you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will lead you away from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When the hadhi sarati mustaqim fa'tabiyu wa la ta'tabiyu subul fa'tafarakum bikum an sabilihi thalikum wasakum bihi la'allukum tattaqoon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and verily this is my straight path. So follow it and follow not other paths for they will separate you away from his path this he has ordained for you, that you may become al-muttaqoon, al-muttaqeen. So this is the path. The path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a straight path. And the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the path that will lead you to Jannah. And those other paths will lead you to the shaitan. And they will lead you to misguidance and going astray. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us for our many, many mistakes that we do during the day and the night. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said incorrectly was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.